easily make changes to it without having to account for any weird angle or something like that. So I'm going to close this down and we jump back into the leg geometry. So at now at this level, this is this is this used to be that native data, it's now been replaced by an instance. Now we can come over here and around that x axis we can transform it. Okay? So then when I close this down back in the main modeling window, we return back to that angled view. So there, there are degrees of freedom in terms of how you set up a scene, but what I've done here is I've created uh, two layers of nesting for this piece of data right here. When I double click it, it takes us into one level, okay, which on the left has the basic angling, and then double clicking that takes us into the native geometry in case we wanted to easily modify the native geometry without any kind of rotation to take into account. So this is very important for organizing your scene and setting up these data structures because it's actually it's, it's a little bit more work up front but it gives you a lot more control in the long run. Okay so that component is done. So what we're going to do now is we're going to come over here and we're going to turn our attention. So if we take a look at this right now we can obviously see that this is uh, coming into um, that this is you know starting to work itself out. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at the the face right here. So I've set it up so that we have a piece right here that's going to function to have as a piece of glass. And we're going to apply a material to that um, uh, in the next phase after we get all the arrangements set up. For now, what I want to do is I'm going to take a look at this in the left view. So I'm going to I'm going to come over here and look at all of this in the left view. And I'm going to switch over to something like outline mode. So if we look at this right here, we've got a series of components inside of here. Okay, so we've got um, the hands and a piece of glass and, and then a backing for the clock face right here. Um, now in this particular case, I'm going to assume that I'm only going to have one clock face and I'm not likely to have it replicated. So in order to make editing these pieces of data a little bit more efficient, this is a good candidate for using the simple grouping function. And that puts a bounding box around that piece of data and makes it act as a single unit. But we want to go in and edit those components right now. So what I'll do is I'll double click any part of that grouping. And in fact, I'm going to come over here and call this, I'm going to call this face assembly. And, and you're going to note that a group does not appear down here in the resource palette. Okay, so that's another distinction. It's just a, an organizational mechanism um, that exists only in the original place that it was created. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and double click this. And it jumps me into that face assembly. And so it kind of exists in its own little 3D universe here, apart from all the other data, which is going to make it a lot easier to, uh, to work with. Now, we have the face right here. So if I come over here and switch over to smooth mode, I can see these shaded. And this clock face part is actually going to get in the way a little bit. So I'm going to come over here and hide the selected component. So it's going to hide from the scene temporarily. And we'll bring it back. So what we want to do is we want to come over here and take a look at a couple of uh, these components that we have right here. So we've got a large hand right here which is going to function as the second hand and then we've got a second hand down here. Now it could be minutes or it could be hours. At this, in this point we only, have, we only have one of them. And what we need to do is we need to create the second one which would likely be the minutes because this is fairly short and so it would function probably as, a, as an hour marker. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this piece of geometry and we're going to alter it slightly to produce a second copy, albeit one that's been elongated out a little bit. So I'm actually going to come over here and to make this even, um, well, I'm to make this a little bit easier, I'm going to take this piece right here and I'm also going to hide that. So we'll gain access just to this piece right here. Now what I'm going to do is, is, because we don't want the pieces of geometry to exactly overlap, I'm going to come down here. Now note I'm in the Move tool right here. I'm going to hold the Option Alt key down 
and click and drag and pull a copy of this out right there. Okay, so it's going to sit just in front of the original piece. So if we come back into the front view right here, we're going to actually go in and we're going to alter the polygon data for this. Now, we could certainly come in here and elongate this out by coming to the object level um, scale tool, click and just drag this down. But note, it's, it's going to scale everything. And we don't want this circular part to be altered at all. Okay, so we'll undo that. So instead what we're going to do is we're going to go in and edit the polygon structure directly. So in order to be able to easily select through, I'm going to switch over to wireframe mode. In this case, outline and wireframe mode for this particular model are going to look the same because all of the components are polygon meshes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to establish the fact that I want to scale perhaps from this point on down. So everything above here, so everything up here is going to stay exactly as it is. But everything below we want to scale a little bit. So in order to scale only from that position, we have to establish a mechanism that that determines the center of scaling for that position. And there are a couple of ways we can do it. The easiest way in this particular case is to use a guide. So if I come over here to the guide tool, click that, you can click any edge and a guide will be established based off that edge. And that allows us to scale things along that guide. But what we also want to do is we want to see if I just simply click it, you can see a guide appear right there that has established itself. I'm going to go into hidden line mode to make that a little bit more uh, obvious. That has um, established itself based on that guide. So anything that I do, for instance, if I move this particular guide, everything, everything will be governed by that guide. See how that will only move along the direction of that guide? But in this case, we want to do a scaling operation. So I'm going to come to front view again. And I'm going to back out a little bit. And I'm going to switch over to outline mode. When we're in hidden line mode, if I just marquee selected around these components, only the front facing parts polygons would be selected or vertices in this case because we're in point mode. So that's why I need to switch over to outline or wireframe mode which allow us to see through all the way and the selection system will do that also. So I can uh, select around here and then use the scale tool. Now one thing to note is that by default the um, center of the guide is going to be right there. You see that little red dot? It's not too obvious. You see the little red dot? That's the point we actually clicked and then the guide established itself along that edge. The point we clicked was established as the center point for that guide. Now we have a situation here where we would actually like it to scale. We've selected up to this point. We would actually like it to scale from that point right there. So I'm going to go back to the guide tool and I'm going to hold the option and shift keys at the same time and then click kind of close to that vertex right there and it will reassign itself to that edge and then pop itself to the closest vertex that we clicked to. And since that's red, that means that's going to be the scaling uh, position, scaling center. So when I come to the scale tool right here, I can click this and I can elongate this copy down so that that functions as a minute's hand. Okay. And it left that part up there unaltered. Okay, so let's um, let's take a look at this now. Now I've already set this up so that the the um, center points for these two are set at zero along the y-axis and zero along the x-axis. So using the same operation that we had done for those two other components, and you'll note that when I transformed the, the vertices here inside of this, it didn't alter the position for, the, for that pivot point. It stayed right where it was originally, which is what it's supposed to do. So that's going to allow me to come over here and take and rotate this and, and uh, position it in such a way 
that, uh, you know, to create kind of an arrangement. Now I'm going to press Command 4 or just come to the menu right here and say Show Hidden and that will bring all the components back. And you'll notice that they're being clipped right here. There's nothing wrong with the geometry, but there's a clipping plane. It's as if the model were hitting this physical screen and being clipped by it. And we can reset that by holding the spacebar down and pulling along that corner right there to reset that. Now, I'm just going to come over here and go into outline mode again. Now you'll note here the center point is not set correctly. This needs to be at zero along the y-axis, the same as these are. So this is again where we just come to set object origin and type in a zero right there. And then we could grab one of these and position that. Okay, so we've set all of this up and there's the glass in, in, in the way again but um, all the components are now um, set up correctly inside of there. So the final thing that we're going to do before we move on to the rendering phase is we're going to take this entire assembly because see right now we've got all of these components loose in here and if we want to alter this by moving another copy of it into the scene um, or in this case we're also going to take it and rotate it back so that it pivots around this point here, but this back part is resting on the ground plane. See with all of these components right now, there's no way of doing that because they're all quasi-independent at this point. So if we tried to rotate this now, um, do you see how some components are staying right up there and it's messy. So what we need to do now is finally take all of these components and create one final shape for them called uh, Final Clock. So there it goes. It's moved all of those into a new, a new uh, shape. Now, what we can do is we can set this up and arrange it in the scene without messing up the original uh, uh, assembly and structure of our assembly. Because all we're going to be doing is altering this instance. So I can take this. I'm going to assume that what's going to end up happening is, see, I'm going to type the Y key. I'm going to assume that I want to have it resting on the ground plane. And I, I tend to think of the Y grid as zero, right on the Y grid is sort of the ground plane. So if I come back over here and move this right there, okay? So it looks like it's sitting right on there. We need to pivot it so that this ends up rotate, or sitting right there. So we actually need to grab our pivot point, which so far we've been moving numerically, and we want to simply grab it and just physically move it down there just with the mouse. So it's it's hidden right behind, see it's right there, it's kind of hidden behind that, that little red uh, widget there. So I can come over here and hold the command key or control on the PC, click and drag and pull that right down there. And if you want it to be a little bit more accurate, then you can just come over and zoom in and then command key again and drag that right there. So that'll be the rotation point. And then with the rotation tool, and again, looking at this, we're gonna rotate around the X axis here. I can grab and rotate that down until it's right there. So the great thing is, when I double click this, we jump back into this original piece of data, okay, that's untransformed and has all the subcomponents in place. So scene organization is really important and it gives you a lot of freedom for editing um, the scene later on if you need to uh, adjust anything. Like if we needed to, you know, alter the, the position of the hands, if we wanted to come in here and rotate those, that would be a very easy matter of just jumping into the appropriate uh, data set and um, grabbing that and, and rotating it. Okay, so that is the uh, end of this first part of um, this tutorial.